Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use Google Classroom for online learning. In this video, I'm going to take you through various different ways to access work, engage with the content, and submit assignments. I will look at this both from a PC, web-based interface, and from an iPad. This is the student's view of the classroom, and here we have the class title, and this is the stream which is just kind of a collection of everything that's happening in the class. You can stay up to date and it gets posted in real time. Then we have the classwork tab. And on this tab, you can kind of see a collection of everything that's happening and it gets grouped by topic. So if you have something, for example, a, a test on geology, then everything you're going to need will fall into this category. But let's go back to the stream and we see that the teacher has posted a material. So we click there and here's the material. There's a whole lot of stuff about the lesson. And these are the resources that the teacher, in this case me, wants to have the students access. So one of them is a website. And you click on the link and it takes you to that website so you can see all the information about these things. Lovely. Then we have a video, which I'm not going to play for copyright reasons, but if you click, you'll see the video starts to run. I'm just going to pause before anything happens there. Um, but you get the general idea. You can also watch it on YouTube or just maximize it here. Then we have a worksheet. And if you click here, you can see the worksheet. And the way to access that is to click here, open in a new window, which is a strange way of going about it. And now this magical download button has appeared. And if we click it, it will download. As you can see, there are some examples at the bottom, but I'll download it again just to show you. But you can see I've been practicing this video a few times. So there we go. And now you have a downloadable, uh, I mean, an editable PDF that you can use and work with, or you can print it if you would prefer. And then last of all, we have a quiz. And if you click that, it takes you to a quiz I prepared earlier. And I tested this earlier, so you can see it's limiting me. Um, but you can go and view your score and see what you achieved. And this is how I did on the quiz, which is quite pleasing, seeing as I set it up myself. One would hope I would do this well. I just got one wrong as an example. But you can see that's another way that students can connect to work. And then you can see if I click here, I have all my classes and then I can go to my other one. Here's advanced mathematics. Oh, I've got the tutorial due on Wednesday. Here is the thing about the assignment. It says, remember to complete the tutorial before Friday's quiz. Tips in differential calculus is the same thing. I can click on a video to watch it or I can go here and there's another worksheet to go for. And then I can say, well, actually, if I look at it, it looks probably terrifyingly difficult. Yes, look at all that. Goodness me. That's a lifetime's worth of work. Um, but I can just say mark or done, or I can click add or create, and then I can add up a link from my file. I mean, from my Google Drive, I can add a web link if I've got something like that. I can create a new document and answer straight away here. Or if I already had the work done, I could click file, and then I could upload the work that I'd done and submit it for this assignment. I can also add a private comment. Oops, not section. Section. So I've typed there. Uh, let's have a meetup session. I send that through. Great, and then me, Connor, has sent this link. Now let's see what the teacher sees. I go back here, and if I go into my advanced mathematics, this is the only time ever in the history of the world that I will ever host a mathematics thing. And if I go here, I will see, there we go, there's some information. So I'm finding this task really tricky to do. Just to let you know, I would have also had an email about this, but I'm not going to go into my email box now. And then I can say, sure, let's meet on Monday during Lesson three, does that work for you? I'll send the meeting link after you confirm. confirm. Sorry that you're watching me type, but you, I'm just illustrating the principle. Then I send that through. Then Connor goes back here. This is not Connor's view. Let's just refresh this page and there, oh, there I popped through. It was in real time. There. And I can say, yes, 
thanks so much. I mean, I am effectively talking to myself right now, so you may want to question my sanity, but you're getting the idea. And then as a teacher, I'm going to get this information. Let's just see, it should come through shortly. There we go. Yes, thanks so much. Okay, so now I would go and create the meetup for them. Um, and I won't show you how I do that, but when you next tune in, I will be showing you how to follow a link to an online meet. So I will just pause briefly and go and do that. There's going to be a bit of a jump in the video, but you'll understand why. I just wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like from the student's perspective. I'm using the iPad because I'm using my laptop with two users and it can be a bit tricky, but I'm going to show you quickly what it kind of looks like. Uh, please forgive any feedback that you might hear. Um, so this is the calendar view and I'm in the student's calendar and you'll see that on the 16th I have this online meetup. So I tap there and if we go to the bottom it says you've got this video call. If I tap that it's going to open in the Google Meets app. Hello, here I am. And you'll see that there's already this meeting that I'm supposedly hosting as a teacher. Excuse me, will I just multitask here? And then if I join that meeting, you'll see I'll come through. And there we go. I'm busy teaching and presenting, and then I can do all of this stuff. And this is going to be a bit shuddery because obviously I'm using my same bandwidth to upload and download at the same time. So please don't let this be a judge on the service. But you get the rough idea that I could be live presenting and talking through some content and the students would be hearing this at the same time. But I won't take you through that right now. So that's just an example of what students might see on Google Meets. Right, as promised, now I'm going to show you how you would do this on the web interface. So on your page, we go to Classwork, Google Calendar, and inside Google Calendar, you will see there's online meetup and click on online meetup. If you're wondering why there are two, one of these applies to the classrooms. Uh, if you look down here, you see advanced mathematics. There is a class calendar, calendar, excuse me, and there is also Connor's personal calendar. So they kind of overlap. So if we click here and you'll see we've got join hangouts meet. I click there and that will take me through. Hello again. Um, that will take me through and I'm not going to join or go into this thing because it creates a horrible feed feedback loop. You see this awful sort of ripple effect going on and you hear all sorts of cross sounds because I'm trying to record and play at the same time. So I won't do that. But you get the same idea. I click join now and I'd be able to see whatever the teacher was presenting and we'd be able to have a discussion very much like Skype. So that's that principle. I also just thought I'd show you what it looks like if you're using Google Classroom on the iPad. So you'll see here are all your classes. And if I want to go here, I will see everything that's in advanced mathematics, obviously when the web loads. And then you can see everything like we had before. If you want to tap on assignments, it takes you into different views, but you can still do things like open YouTube videos. I'm not going to do that now, etc., etc. You can see all of that types of stuff. And you can go to all your different classes as we did before. And you see, instead of being at the top, the tabs are now at the bottom. So we can go to classwork. We can go to the stuff on volcanoes. And very much the same principle, you can go through everything as you did before. So not much different, just slightly different modalities. I quickly want to take you through how you would submit work on Google Classroom. And I'm going to go through the iPad perspective, but I can also show you the web one. But on the iPad, you're just going to tap on the assignment and you're going to see that you need to do some work. There's a little tab at the bottom, which we tap and I go add attachment. Then I can attach from my Google Drive. I can put a link if it's a website, a file. I can pick a photograph and I can create new documents if you want to just respond right to the assignment then and there and complete it online. But I'm going to just upload from my files. I'm just going to pick one at random. Let's do this keynote skills because that's amazing. And now we wait for that to upload. And while this bar goes, this is a good time to work on your meditation. Think about breathing skills. Contemplate your life. Uh, think about the weather. Try to solve world peace. Um, 
you know, lots of things that you can do. This is an opportunity for a moment of calm and quiet reflection as we slowly watch the bar creep towards the end. There we go, it appears to be done. We just wait for a little confirmation. There it is, it's all done. I tap hand in and off it goes to teacher. Bob's your uncle, easy peasy. And then I can go on with my day. Uh, very, very easy. Next, I will show you how to do that on the web interface. Here we are back in the web view and you can see there's been a new assignment. So I can click there and you see I can add or create. So if I click add or create, it's the same kind of rules as I can upload from my Google Drive a link or I can just work straight in here. I'll show you what that looks like. I just click docs. See, it creates a special document just for this purpose. Great. Got it. I'm going to allow this pop up. Okay, now I can go into it. And it's just created a blank document where I can do. You've heard me typing enough. Yes, I get it. Thank you. The worksheet. I'm not going to let you listen to me typing the whole time, but let's just say that was the story. I would do. And then once I'm done doing everything, I can just tap turn in and off it goes. It goes straight to the assignment. And that's it. I've sent it through. I have submitted it. If you go to student work, you'll be able to see my work has been submitted there and the teacher will see that. Easy as pie. Alternatively, I could have added an attachment, but it's much the same principle as you saw before. And that's it. Now you know everything there is to know about Google Classroom. You know how to navigate the feed, access materials, submit assignments, join meetings, and connect with the teacher that way. I hope this has been helpful. Please stay tuned for more of our tips on how to master online learning.